Good evening. Happy Saturday. I like making videos about discussing law videos, so I'm going to do it. I know I don't get a lot of people uh, watching them, but I find them to be fascinating. I find him to be fascinating. He's a fascinating fella. Dr. Law. Discussing Law Trademark. Anyway, he made this video tonight, and uh, they're common legal myths. And I, I find it to be more... It just showcases how he doesn't understand the words that he's using and what he's talking about. As far as the trademark thing, he's right. I have no issues with his analysis there. But then he gets into uh, the right to an attorney. He starts off looking at the Sixth Amendment. Now, the Sixth Amendment guarantees your right to the assistance of counsel for your defense. You have the right to assistance of counsel for your defense. That is in a criminal prosecution. Uh, the Sixth Amendment has been... Has been um, applied to the states, I think through Huerta versus California, or was it Powell versus Alabama? I forget which it was. Uh, but anyway, the Sixth Amendment does apply to the United States. Now, uh, to say that because the Sixth Amendment guarantees your right to counsel in a criminal matter, therefore you don't have the right to counsel in a civil matter is akin to saying, well, if you use eggs in a recipe to make cake, then you can't use eggs in a recipe to make brownies. It doesn't make sense. Uh, and then from there, he goes on to this, which is an ABA web page. It's this one right here. It's this. Did I not grab it? I have them out of place. It's this one right here. So it's just a little bit bigger so that you could see it on your screen. Uh, this is this is his uh, evidence that you don't have a right to counsel, a civil right to counsel. This is an American Bar Association. This is the Standing Committee on Legal Aid and Indigent Defense. Notice that it's saying indigent defense. And then he reads this portion right here. The at a glance, civil right to counsel, that's in quotes, that's a term of art, sometimes called, again in quotes, civil Gideon, end quote, refers to the idea that people who are unable to afford lawyers unable to afford lawyers in legal matters involving basic human needs should have access to a lawyer at no charge. The Gideon reference is linked to the famous Supreme Court ruling that individuals charged with serious crimes have a right to counsel. But did it say that? Did it say that they have a right to counsel? Well, this is Gideon versus Wayne, right? And I won't bore you with it, but let me just say that it overrules, uh, what was that? Betts versus Brady? I think it was Betts versus Brady. But anyway, what it says is indigent persons, people who can't afford lawyers, have the right to an attorney. Indigent. You have the right to an attorney. If, if, you get, if you get one day in jail, that means you had a right to an attorney. If you're indigent, if you can't afford an attorney, you have the right to an attorney. What does that mean? It means you have the right to have counsel appointed for you. They talk about the appointment of counsel. The appointment of counsel, that's what they're talking about. If you're indigent, you have the right to appointment of counsel. So that's why this is talking about civil Gideon, Gideon versus Wainwright, for people who are unable to afford lawyers should have access to a lawyer at no charge, to have a lawyer appointed for them at no charge. Now, if you actually go on to read these things down in here, you come across this rule, right? Or this, uh, not rule, excuse me. This, uh, this is, this is, I believe this is the uh, Model Act for implementing a right to counsel. It's a Model Act. The resolution seeks to create a model act for implementation of a policy. Resolve that the American Bar Association urges, urges, this is no law, urges federal, state, and territorial governments to provide legal counsel as a matter of right at public expense to low-income persons. See, low-income persons. If you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you. This, they're, just, they're trying to extend this to, uh, to civil matters. That's their, that's their hope to have the appointment of counsel. And then they go on. This is, uh, this is one of these things in here. Is it the national coalition? Hold on one second. Uh, 
uh, this is the right to counsel's efforts and developments. So Alaska, they have uh, adopted a resolution sponsored that directly tracks the language, yada, yada. Specifically, the Alaska resolution urges the state of Alaska to provide legal counsel as a matter of right to low-income persons. Low-income persons. Uh, California, same thing. Hawaii, same thing. Again, these are uh, providing providing counsel, providing counsel to persons with low income. It says th these people already had the right to be represented by counsel. They just didn't have the money. So what this what this ABA is what this ABA uh, Standing Committee on Legal Aid and Indigent Defense is arguing for is they, they have the right to counsel. They don't have the money. Let's provide them with counsel. Provide them with counsel. It doesn't, this doesn't mean that they don't have a right to counsel. This is a, see how it's in quotes? Because it's in quotes, it's, it's shorthand for an idea. It's like saying reasonable suspicion. That stands for a larger idea. Reasonable suspicion supported by articulable facts that, that crime is afoot, right? But you just say reasonable suspicion. They've shortened the civil right to counsel, the civil right to have counsel appointed. They're shortening the right to have counsel appointed for indigent persons in certain civil matters at the public's expense. Shorted down to civil right to counsel also called civil Gideon because Gideon implies that indigent status. So that's what he doesn't understand. You have the right to an attorney. You just don't have the right to have an attorney point appointed for you. In fact, you don't have the right to have an attorney appointed for you unless you're indigent, unless you are unable to pay for one yourself, even in a criminal matter. So the, the right to have an attorney appointed for you only kicks in if you can't afford to have an attorney retained on your own dime. But you have the right, you have the right to an attorney the entire time. If you're, if you're Bill Gates and you get charged with a crime, you have the right to an attorney, even though you're not indigent. Even though you could afford to pay for your own, you have the right to an attorney. You just don't have the right to have an attorney pointed for you. I hope, I've, I hope you understand the distinction there. I know I kind of beat it up. And the next place he goes to is frivolous defenses. Well, we're going to actually listen to a little bit of this one because it's just apparent he doesn't understand what he's talking about. And I want to I want to preface this. There is a... A defense. You always have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to cross-examine witnesses. You have the right to make the plaintiff or the prosecution prove every element of whatever it is to the to the requisite bur burden of proof. So, in a criminal matter, you have the right to make the the prosecution. You don't have to plead guilty. You have the right to make a prosecution prove every element of each crime beyond a reasonable doubt. You have that right. You don't have to give that up. Even if you're 100% guilty, you have the right to defend yourself by forcing the prosecution to prove everything. You don't have to plead guilty. You can say, no, you have to prove everything. So Jonathan Cooper Law has article on frivolous defenses and frivolous lawsuits. So he's, so he's Googling it. Uh, he Googled this one. He said, Jonathan Cooper law. That's this one. Come on, load for me. This one, they're talking about, uh, a defendant's refusal to answer interrogatories on technical and procedural grounds. And the judge compelled the defendant to respond meaningfully. That's not, I have no idea what this, this guy's blog is about. I don't really know or really care, but it's a blog. What is a frivolous defense? Frivolous defense is a defense that has no basis in fact. Okay. Frivolous defense is a defense that has no basis in fact or law. And so this is it. We're going to hear what he reads. Oh, he stopped. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's, let's listen to that one again. Um, what is a frivolous defense? Frivolous defense is a defense that has no basis in fact or law. 
And he stops there. Why does he stop there? Well, because if you keep reading, you'll understand that they're not, they're not talking about defending yourself generally, but affirmative defenses, pled defenses. It is not supported by any argument or evidence in a waste of court's time. Great. The rules of federal procedure provide that on motion, such defense may be ordered to be stricken from the pleadings. That's kind of weird. Here's rule 12, uh, how to present defenses. Hmm. Each defense to a claim for relief in any pleading must be asserted in the response of pleading if one is required. Uh, but you can assert the following defenses by a motion, yada, yada, yada. So you might assert a defense for lack of subject matter uh, jurisdiction. These are called affirmative defenses. And it might be a frivolous. But here, let me, let me just point something out. What is a criminal defense? There's here are 17 common defenses to, to criminal charges. You can plead that you're innocent. That's a defense. Are you suggesting that that is a frivolous defense? If you're guilty and you, if you actually did the crime and you plead not guilty, is that, is that frivolous? Constitutional violations may be frivolous. Do you think, do you think a, a, uh, criminal defendant is going to be charged with uh, being f being frivolous if he asserts that, I don't know, uh, let's say that the First Amendment protected his right to be in a town hall in Ironton, Ohio, or whatever that building was, uh, because he was protesting there. Do you think that is a frivolous defense, sir? Alibi. I had an alibi. Someone said I was, or I was somewhere else. Insanity is a defense. And then here are some affirmative defenses for civil matters, ambiguity, failure to state a cause of action, uh, statute of limitations ran, uh, latches, breach of contract, no breach by defendant, discharge by bankruptcy, failure to mitigate damages. These are affirmative defenses. So, Affirmative defenses are different than just requiring the plaintiff to prove every element of each uh, cl uh, allegation or requiring the prosecution to prove each element of the crime. Remedies for frivolous lawsuits. Wikipedia, you know, I could have edited this a minute ago. Defines Wikipedia, Dr. Law, go into Wikipedia for defining what a frivolous defense is. Let's go. Let's look at what Wikipedia says for frivolous defenses. Just load. A claim or defense may be frivolous because it has no underlying justification in fact. So it's called a defense. What, what are they talking about when they say a defense? What are they talking about when they say a defense? It's not just defending yourself. It's a, it's a defense. It is a affirmative defense. Affirmative defense. I was acting in defense of others. I was acting in self-defense. It's an affirmative defense. And says she could even get sanctions. Um, Helen. She could get sanctions if she asserted a frivolous defense, a, a, an affirmative defense. If she just says that, no, I didn't do it, and Chile has to prove I did it, that's not, that's not what they're talking about when they're talking about frivolous defenses. law. That's an interesting point. In my experience. Collins law. That's another blog. Frivolous defenses are a far greater threat to courtroom justice than frivolous lawsuits. It's a blog, dude. So, yeah, I mean, Kate really should be stipulating the facts, right? Well, so, so Kate will, I mean, assuming, assuming that Chili's case gets past the various motions to dismiss that I'm almost 100% certain are going to come flying at his face faster than his boyfriend's, never mind. Um, anyway. If he gets past those, then the parties will probably agree to certain facts. There will probably be uncontested facts. 
but she doesn't have to agree to all of the facts that he is asserting because they might be wrong. And the jury, the finder of fact, if, if he amends his complaint, by the way, to ask for a jury trial, because he only asked for the jury trial on his civil case cover sheet, which was a screw up. Um, so if he, if he doesn't amend his complaint to actually ask for a jury trial, then the judge will determine the facts. If he does ask for a jury trial, then the jury will determine the facts, but the jury gets to determine the facts. Kate doesn't have to stipulate to, to any of them. She could just generally deny all of them or specifically deny all of them. And just let, um, um, Chili, the justice. Chili. Yeah. Kate should just roll over and let Chili win. Cause that's the only way Chili could possibly do it. Anyway, that's about all for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.